All right. Welcome back to the Outdoor Drive Podcast. This is episode number 85. Yes, I said 85. Can you believe this, Stephen? It's 85. It's gone quick, real it's fast and in a hurry. That's right. It happens almost too quick, right? Well, this is your boy, East Coast Trev, and this is Steve. Steve, man, this is awesome. I'm kind of pumped that we're at 85, honestly. That's not too far away from 100. You're right, but that tells me I've only got 15 episodes to wrap up the changes. That's right, because we have big things coming here on the Outdoor Drive podcast. We're refacing the podcast. Pretty excited about it, honestly. New things to come. Media is going to be a little bit different. If you guys haven't already, get on over to our YouTube page. Hit the subscribe, the notification button. We got some good things coming in the 2021 season. Uh, there actually is a bunch of good stuff on there already. Um, we have the Cooking with Seth. We have all of our haunts. Turkey Camp is on there, live and ready to go. We have a youth hunt coming here soon. Um, Kim's hunt is on there. Uh, I got a couple of uh, turkey hunts and uh, some good stuff. And then we got deer season. We'll crack into some good things. I actually just getting ready um, to book my bear hunt. Yeah. What a thunk. You booked your bear hunt. I've already got my Idaho deer tag, and I'm waiting to hear back on the draw, the Idaho elk tag, and uh, may do a twofer while we're there. Elk so, and whitetail? Uh, elk, elk and mule Elk and mule deer at the same time. Jesus. And, and hopefully we'll have a, another Ohio hunt. Things will be pretty good here in the 2020 season. Pretty excited for that. So. Oh, yeah. We're really excited. Some good things going on. Turkey season's kind of – it's has it closed for you down in Virginia? Yeah, it closed down for us on Saturday. Saturday was the last day. I still have a Pennsylvania tag, so if I find time, I can try to jump up there and see if I can get something done on the farm. If not, we're rolling right into warm water, so plan on getting on the river quite a bit, doing a lot of, lot of shooting, a lot of shooting, because we don't have long before the shoot. That's right. I know that's coming up in a couple two weeks. Speaking of and what, what Steven's talking about is the WCB shoot out in Rio, Illinois. Uh, we're going to take the drive out there again, spend the weekend with those boys. They got a good thing going. If you guys haven't already or aren't having the plans to go over there and join us at the shoot, make sure you get on over to WCB um, on Facebook and check that out. There's an event over there or workingclassbowhunter.com. And kind of see what's going on. You're not going to want to miss out on it. They got a lot of good giveaways, a lot of good stuff. There's an after party, a little bit of everything. We are going to be there. Uh, if you want a convoy out there, we'll meet you on the way from Connecticut to Virginia to Illinois. You let us know, we'll convoy out there. So you're not going to want to miss out on that one. It's actually going to be a good time. We are actually sponsoring some of the parts of it. So uh, make sure that you're going to show your face there. We'd love to shake your hands and uh, and kind of hang out. So. Don't miss out on that opportunity. Definitely, man. And so for me, I mean, turkey season's kind of winding down here. We got two weeks left um, in turkey you, season. You got some bow kills you got to get. Yeah, I know. I know my uh, team on the bow hunting league is not going to be very happy with me. Uh, this turkey season's been kind of tough, honestly. It's been kind of a grind. And it's it's not just me. It's kind of like everybody across the board, which is kind of weird. I mean, your yeah. friends came up from Virginia. Here's the crazy thing that I'm seeing, and I think you may be running into it as well. Virginia down here, as you saw, was absolutely dead. The birds weren't working. It's like they weren't breeding. It was insane. But the last week of season, it's like the gates opened up and people started dropping birds left, right, and center. I think well, they are late this year. Well, I think, you know something even crazier? We're already seeing poults. What? Yeah. Wow. I Tell me seen about that. Yet. I've seen nests, but I haven't seen any poults yet. I haven't seen poults myself, but there was two people that have confirmed that they've had poults, so that they've seen turkeys with poults. That is nuts, right? It was too damn cold for them to be breeding out that early. That's what I'm saying. I don't get it. I, like, I don't understand. Like, there's still hens with toms. Well, not really. Actually, in the past couple of days, I haven't seen any hens. Yeah, they they've have all been broken up. No, and the toms have kind of been by themselves. So it's more of a reason. Tomorrow's going to be 84 degrees. So I'm a little nervous about getting out, but I don't know. I'm going to get out with the bow and kind of put one down for the bow hunting league, honestly, because I haven't pulled my – Ah, I just kind of – I needed to get one on the ground, so I went out with a shotgun when I should have been bow hunting. But Hey, that's all right, man. We had some monkeys and, to knock off the back. Now they're off. You can get out there and uh, add some – 
add some inches. We'll see. We'll see, man. I got to at least put one down with the bow this year, I'm hoping. So we'll see what happens. We got good things coming. So fishing season's around the corner. I don't know. I'm pumped up. I've got wow, good, good stuff yeah. coming. And be I will. Here. Yeah, absolutely. And and I do, I do, I know everybody's kind of tuning in. And some of you guys listen on the YouTube side. We've kind of with the with the refacing, kind of going back on some of that stuff, is that we've gone away from the video podcast on the YouTube side. It's just gonna be audio only. Um, because we want to focus a lot of our time and efforts to our hunting videos, our weekly um videos that go onto our YouTube, our short films that kind of stuff, our reviews, so on and so forth. So we're kind of focusing our video aspect and our video time to only um, our media stuff. Uh, we'll no longer have a online or a, not online, but a video uh, podcast on YouTube. It will be audio. You can still listen to it on YouTube, but it's going to be audio only uh, just to make things a little bit easier. But um, just to save me well, some time behind the editing board, ultimately. It's just, and to I, focus I would, more on the stuff that we need to be focusing on. I would rather take the hours from producing the video podcast and dump them into meaningful content that will engage viewers. Absolutely. Right now, the goal is like, follow, share, and subscribe. We got to get those numbers pumped up, and uh, we got to completely rechange the game, how we're doing it, if we want the page to grow. So we would greatly appreciate your support. Whether you like YouTube or not, sign in, hit subscribe, leave a comment. We'd appreciate it. Well, what do you think, man? We should thank those that uh, kind of help us out throughout the weekly journeys of the podcast. Definitely, um, brother. Run them down. Uh, Nor'easter Game Calls. Get them in close. Nor'easter Game Calls dot com. Uh, Gator Outdoors. Gator Outdoors dot com. Use promo code Outdoor Drive 25. Yeah, 25. Save 25 percent on all Gator Outdoors, uh, the lifestyle brand over there, outfitting the working class. Also, Timber Tumblers, TimberTumblers.com to get your custom Tim, your custom tumblers. It's a tongue twister every single time. Uh, you can get all kinds of crazy stuff over there on his website, dog dishes, um, you name it. He'll make it for you, custom. Also, um, Broadside Camo, BroadsideCamo.com. Use promo code Outdoor Drive. That is the photorealism camouflage for the aerial hunter. Out on the limb, out on the limb, MFG.com. Also, Ducks on the Bay, DucksOnTheBay.com, um, Wicked Twisted Bowstrings, WickedTwistedBowstrings.com. Use promo code OutdoorDrive10. Save yourself 10% over there. And is that all? Dude, you nailed it. <laughs> all right. That's all of them. And, guys, don't forget, man, it's going to be the last week for the duck hunting giveaway here. Um, if you guys haven't already, get on over, order something from one of the sponsors I just listed off, and – if they don't have a promo code, just go on and put Outdoor Drive Podcast Giveaway. You do not want to miss out on this. It's a once-in-a-lifetime duck hunt. I am not going to stress this enough. Please get in on this. Um, I don't want you guys to miss out on it. We are going to close that out on June 1st, and then we will talk to Danny from Ducks on the Bay and have him pick the winner. Um, he's going to do a random selection of we're going to give him all the last names and he's just going to pick one of the last names so that was the deal that's what he wanted to do so that's what we're going to do so make sure you guys get in on that don't miss out get on the even ducks on the bay.com like i've said in the past order their sticker pack it's five dollars and speaking of we do have hats for sale get on our social media pages i can't promise that they're going to be any left but we are have some for sale at this time so that's it man pretty cut dry and simple um I'm Short excited. Sweet. Man, I like yeah. it. And yeah, this, it's all good. The, the whole show kind of went this way, man. Like the boys do a really good job. I didn't have to say a whole lot. I mean, they they brought you know the what game. they're doing. They yeah. got a good thing going. The Bow Hunting League uh is who we have on this week. They're good. they're they're genuinely in it for all the right reasons. Um, I'm personally on the Bow Hunting League. I love it. It's a great thing. I'm in on their turkey competition. You guys have all heard me talk about it. Um, they do a great thing. The deer hunting competition is going to start here June 1st. You don't want to miss out on that. If you guys are elk hunters in the western side, um, they have an elk bracket that's coming out. They got a really cool thing going. They're going to get into more detail here on the podcast. Um, but they are genuinely some of the best guys out there. They're in it for all the right reasons. Um, so make sure to go on over and check them out. But before we do that, um, let me crank this up. We've got news for the crews coming in. Our man, Mike Salter.
Hey everyone, Mike here with some news for your crews. We're going to kick this one off in Wyoming, where the major elk herds are nearly 30% over objective, with an estimation of 102,000 elk within 28 closely monitored herds, and another 8,400 elk in seven other herds. Uh, this has resulted in the Wyoming Wildlife Commission unanimously approving the addition of 2,000 more licenses for the 2021 season. Uh, with this, the biologists anticipate a total elk harvest of 27,096 uh, in 2021, which would actually be 2.5% higher than uh, what was harvested in 2020. The application period uh, for those licenses did close on February 1st for non-residents, but residents still have until June 1st to apply for those licenses for 2021. Uh, also in Wyoming, the legislators have passed some bills uh, affecting sportsmen. The first one is HB 0122, which will increase the conservation stamp cost uh, from $12.50 to $21.50, uh, with the majority of the increase going towards funding access easements to help increase access to tough, uh, tough to access areas. Uh, and this increase will take effect July 1st of this year. The next one is HB 0101, uh, it's elk feeding ground uh, requirements. Uh, which requires Game and Fish to receive an order from the governor before they close any um, feed ground controlled by the state, and that is effective immediately. Uh, HB 0115 uh, will lower the minimum age for youth hunters to hold a big game license to 11 years old uh, as long as they turn 12 by the end of the calendar year, and this also takes effect July 1st of this year. Uh, and lastly, HB 0095 which will allow the Game and Fish Commission to create a program for people to take game roadkill. Uh, it will require people to take the entire carcass, and it's effective July 1st. However, uh, the safety guides, rules, and permitting will be discussed by the commission, and they expect to have details hammered out by spring of 2022. So on to Colorado, where the state has added 200,000 additional acres of state land to be available for hunters and anglers. This land was previously off limits, but will soon be open for conservation purposes. Uh, it is expected that this will increase revenue through additional hunting and fishing licenses to help preserve these lands for sportsmen. Uh, there is a catch that is causing some unhappy people. Uh, the Colorado Parks and Wildlife Department has come under attack due to the fact that in order to access these 200,000 acres, one must have a hunting or fishing permit. Hikers and others feel it is unfair but Parks and Wildlife has argued that the state trust lands are opening up for the sole purpose of hunting and fishing uh, with the purpose of gaining revenue for conservation. Uh, I think this is great. Uh, it's dedicated lands like this for hunting and fishing, um, which should be opened up in all states. Uh, I think it's a great program that they've got going on there in Colorado and hopefully some other states uh, latch on to that to try to gain revenues for conservation in their own states. Uh, now, back to Connecticut uh, for some more good news, and a uh, big thanks to Steve Mardik for sending this one to me. Uh, the Norwich Recreational Department has partnered with the police department to hold a community police fishing series for use 15 years and younger. Uh, this is a family-friendly catch and release program where officers will be teaching and assisting uh, during the events throughout the summer, and each month the prize will be awarded to an individual with the best catch. Uh, to be entered for the prizes, submissions uh, of catches should be sent to recreation at cityofnorwich.org. The dates for the events are June 5th from 9 to 11 a.m. at Mohegan Park, uh, July 17th from 9 to 11 a.m. at Howard T. Brown, and August 7th from 9 to 11 a.m. also at Howard T. Brown. These are free events, uh, and you can register at norwichct.org slash recreation or call 860-823-3791. Uh, and lastly, a uh, feel-good story from Connecticut's Environmental Conservation Police. Uh, in September 2020, a Good Samaritan located a tackle box full of tackle at the Deep Marine headquarters in Old Lyme. The tackle box was turned into, en was turned into NCON Officer Blackwell. The officer, knowing the importance of the fishing gear, uh, especially tackle, uh, to anglers that may have had gear passed down or something they caught their personal best with, best with, um, tried to find the 
owner, the rightful owner of the tackle box. Well, on May 14th of 2021, Officer Blackwell's efforts paid off as she was able to locate the rightful owner and return it to him. So great work by Encon to uh, go the extra mile and after eight months, uh, return the gear to its rightful owner. So it's a couple of really good things out of Connecticut here, uh, really positive. So uh, thanks, Steve, again, for sending along the stuff for Norwich. Uh, that is for kids. So get the kids out there, get them involved, uh, get them out there with the police officers. Uh, it's just a good program all around. So with that, uh, as always, if you have any news to send to me, uh, please reach out on Facebook at Mike Salter or on Instagram at bearded underscore bow hunter 21. And with that, enjoy the rest of your ride. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you uh, getting in on the news for your cruise, man. Always got something good going on over there. You know, it's, it's just never enough, man. Hey, I just appreciate him doing it. That, that's a lot of time and research he's got to throw into all this. So if you guys like the news for the cruise, Make sure you send Mike a, a thanks. Tell him appreciate it. And and to go along with that, don't don't be afraid to pass your news to him. Like hit him up on social media, all platforms. Give him some news. We want to know what's going on all around. Uh, things are getting to that point. Uh, laws are passing, so on and so forth. Things are changing. People are out fishing, so on and so forth. Camping. Pass those laws and those changes in the outdoors over to Mike because you know he he does this all on his own, man. If you can give him a, you know a pat on the back and a help and hand. He'll more than appreciate it. So what do you think, man? Should we get to the boys? Really get on, tune on in. There is a familiar face in there. You guys are all here. So yeah, a facial here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. He'll, he'll voice, appreciate that. A voice. I'm sorry. I'm so used to the <laughs> I'm so used to video. So I know. It, it's changes. We're changing, man. We're changing. Change is growth. Change Can't is be good, stagnant. Man. Always improve the fighting position. That's right. <laughs> all right, man. Let's give him a shot. Let's pull him up. Here's the bow hunting lead. Big stack, stack, stack. <laughs> All right. We're back on the phone with the boys from the bow hunting league. What's up guys? How are you? Hey, man. Man. What's shaking? Thanks for taking the time to join us on this great podcast on this fine Thursday. You're welcome. You, you guys all like <laughs> looking weird. It, it goes out on Thursday. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to see who asked first. <laughs> Like, no, today's Tuesday. All right. Well, what why you, don't you, what are you drinking in that lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're asking, right? Well, why don't we uh, turn the key? Why don't you guys introduce who you guys are, where you're from, and uh, kind of what you guys do at the Bow Hunting League? Who wants right. to start it off? I'll uh, I'll start off. I'm Ben Harrison. Um, uh, started the Bow Hunting League. Uh, Back in 2015, started out as just a, a bow hunting deer contest. Um, <clears throat> very humble beginnings as far as that goes. Still humble, obviously. But uh, we started out back in 2015, and really we've flourished over the last couple of years. Just getting guys connected uh, to teammates, getting you know, getting this uh contest going we're the largest free bow hunting contest in the nation um i moved to indiana i guess we've been up here five years uh, my wife got a job out of college I moved from tennessee i was in tennessee my whole life before that and uh, still do a lot of hunting and stuff back in tennessee uh that's about it <laughs> as far as i go i mean it's yeah just kind of been rolling with the bow hunting league train and um it's been uh it's been a unique experience. Um, I was doing pretty much everything on my own about four months ago and, uh, had some guys step up and we've got a full team now of guys helping me. And, uh, I'm, I'm seeing the opportunities is it, you know, it's, it's offered since 
we've had so many people step up and help. Uh, it's it's actually, you know, pretty humbling um, as far as all the help and all the volunteering that's been going on. So it's been pretty awesome. So Ben's underselling himself. Like he is the <laughs> the wizard and the mastermind and the visionary behind the bow hunting league. Like every single day, I don't even know how he works or sleeps because he has a hundred new ideas every single day. Five, which may be good, ninety five where they're not, and that's where <laughs> I actually come in. So uh, I'm Daniel Porter. I work down here in Florida. Um, I just moved out here from New Mexico a couple of years ago. I started off with Ben maybe six years ago. We uh, we actually started talking on a different deer hunting contest. And over the years, we progressed in this nice little friendship. Um, I do some social media marketing and some social media uh, Instagram, Facebook accounts for some other hunting platforms. And I just offered my services to Ben one day. Like, hey, man, I'll run your social media. I'll help you on the page. Since then, I've kind of, I've self-proclaimed myself as the operations manager. I'm the one who's behind the scenes all day, just trying to make sure everything is flowing right. Um I am the band hammer. I love taking care of trolls. Um, but circling <laughs> back to Ben's ideas, you know, five amazing ideas every day, 95 where I'm his yin and yang. I like to check him on things. I act as the pessimist because Ben is just so fired up, so motivated, and he wants everything to work. So I kind of try to reel him back down a little and, and we just focus each other out. It's a perfect little balance and it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love this league. Um, I love being a part of it and i can't wait to see what it's going to turn into over the next couple of years so what how many members do you guys actually have on on the bow hunting league so right now we're sitting at about nineteen thousand. that is just members um i'm trying to work and ben's trying to work on the uh conversion rate so last year of i want to say we had about fourteen thousand at the time we started the deer contest we had 530 teams about 1600 members my goal for this year is for us to have over a thousand teams. Um, again, just to get all of those people to sign up. The biggest thing that we battle with Facebook is you're limited on your posting. So every post I throw out there, we only get 5,000 people who can receive it. So um, Ben has created this fantastic marketing campaign that we're going to kick off here soon. And we're just going to get so many teams riled up, signed up and ready to go. Absolutely. Well, we got one last person to introduce himself. We don't want to forget about him. I'll tell you what, I get tired of introducing myself. I'm going to have you introduce me. I, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, what I am in, in relation to the bow hunting league is a fanboy. I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> so I, I'm, a, I'm a participant and uh, I'm, I'm trying to start up and do a uh, step up and do a few other things. I just love it so much and I enjoy it so much. I want to be involved. So why don't you tell everybody who you are? No, no, you do that. Oh, <laughs> y'all know that voice anyways. That's Clay Thurman, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, the Hi, killer. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. That was nice. Call the me squirrel pouch in the show. Crazy man from the West. Pouch. That was someone else. <laughs> yes. Well, you're the story of the squirrel pouch. So there you go. We just want everyone to know who you are. So. <laughs> so, guys, so not only do you guys do a deer hunting league, it's like, well, a deer hunting contest. You also do like a turkey contest. What are some of the other stuff that you guys actually do in the bow hunting league? So we, we started the uh, one shot. It's a backyard, you know, you have a, everybody shoots the same size dot at a specific specified distance each week. And it's done through Facebook live and it kicked off last year. We had, 15 to 20 guys competing in each week. Um, it was pretty, it launched pretty good because of, because of COVID and all the, all the shoots were shut down. Uh, it was kind of a unique little thing we did uh, this year. Ben, hey, if, if you, can I describe it from the outsider looking in one of the newer guys? You mind if I describe it? Okay. That's, that's so, what I want. so we have the one shot and I'd like uh, Clay Thurman to describe this. <laughs> so it, it that was one of the things that made me fall in love with the bow hunting league as a new member last year, I got in just in time to not be able to participate in their final, uh, shoot off their madness shoot off. So what, what it is, is you get one arrow, you get one shot, one Facebook live, you show a clean target face at the specified size and the specified distance. 
You take your live, you walk back, you make your shot, you go up, you verify, you measure. If you hit an X, which is hitting the verified target size, you walk back and take another shot until you miss. You measure on your last one. So last week, for example, was 100 yards. So the winner of that shot, 3X what, Ben? 3X? Yeah. Uh, 3X and an inch and an eighth. It was Matt. It was Matt. Matt Yeah, Matt Coleman did 3Xs. Yeah. So I had early on, I'd shot 2Xs at 100 and uh, a 6 and 5 eighths or something like that. The very next person, it didn't hold up for nothing. The very next person <laughs> to comment yeah. smacks me by three and a half inches out of there. So <laughs> it's, it's a ton of fun. There's no money. It's all, it's all on your honor. Uh, it's, it's just a blast. Is that a good description, Ben? And then there's, there's, it, in the end, there's, the, there's a bracket that you can win yourself into with points. Yeah, and, that's, and that as far as like the involvement for the archers, that's, that's – kind of their involvement well, something unique we figured out <clears throat> about a, a year or two ago the way social media works you're better off doing uh, like when you're working with sponsors using um, using their platforms and them donating like a 25 50 dollar item and they could sponsor a week of the one shot well what happens that post that everybody comments and drops their scores in has their logo on there it has uh, a link to their social media account you know their facebook page and it's just brand exposure at that point and th then what's neat is everything's donations so the it doesn't cost anything to enter it doesn't cost the bow hunting league anything because that sponsor donated a 25 50 100 dollar item and we've had some nice things we had that ultimate predator decoy that you know that's a hundred dollar decoy that was donated one week yeah but danny paris and ultimate predator yeah. really yeah. stepped up there it's a fantastic thing great yeah. company and just and just and what we what what's so unique about the bow hunting league is we are built on small businesses you know just the general climate you know you've got you've got all these vehicles that control everything in the hunting industry which is which is fine it's capitalism all right that's fine but I prefer running with these small businesses and trying to help help them reach more people in, a, in an organic and cheap way. Because, um, to be honest with you, you know, there's some products out there that are just far superior to anything you can buy, you know, from, you know, from other from other outlets. So, but like I said, that's um, that's kind of the other angle on it. Uh, what's cool, though is if you finish in the top 10 of the one shot, you're guaranteed a slot in the one shot madness, which is a 64 man bracket at the end of the year. So it's just like the, just like a March madness for the basketball teams. Right. And each week is head to head. So you only have to beat one person. So it's, it's, it's cool because if you get an auto bid, let's say you're a one seed, you go up against the 16 seed that had to shoot their way in to the bracket. Well, last year, uh, three out of, four of our one seeds got upset in the first round so you really don't know where it's going to go i mean anybody can be good obviously they're going to be pretty good to get into the to the bracket themselves but uh it's you don't you don't have to be great but just on one shot a day and uh and that's and that's kind of what we're seeing you know what we see with this but there's definitely some some guys that are more prevalent in in the in the scoring i mean clay's one of them he'll he'll get three or four points every other week and that what that does is that puts him in a position to be one of those top 10 guys and uh you know if he keeps doing what he's doing he'll probably end up in the top 10 before the uh before the shoot off but or the shoot in so the you thing, can just join in at, at any time yes every week's uh every week's an open shoot so we have some people that don't they end up forgetting or they go on vacation or whatever they don't shoot and then we'll have somebody random come in that'll shoot and they'll get second place and they got nine points and then you know they're in a good position for for the for the uh for the top 10 i mean really i mean if you get i mean we i think 10th place right now is 16 points and it takes you get 15 if you win that bracket for that week or win that win that round and then it goes nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
you know, all the way down, you know, and that's the 10 places pay out each, each week as far as points. And then we have one winner for the, for the prize. And the guys that you're shooting against uh, are, there are serious people there. There's nationally ranked people that you're shooting against, but that mm-hmm. one inch dot at, for example, 40 yards is an equalizer. Our equipment isn't set up to shoot one inch dots at 40 yards. So they might get an X or two. And generally the cream does rise to the talk, excuse me, to the top, but it doesn't, you can beat them. All you have to do is shoot two great shots, right? You right. Know, right in a row and, and you're there. So it's uh, it's a little bit too much of an equalizer. I think sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but it, it certainly does allow uh, anyone a chance to win any week. We've so got some, piece. we've got some pro shooters shooting in it too, but those they're shooting with their hunt rigs. Well, so. Matt Coleman was rookie of the year. I think one year uh, for ASA, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. So. And I mean, Chris, Chris Hammond shoots for Matthews. Um, lucky enough. I got paired up against him last year in the bracket. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was like, Can't only draw. pro shooter I know in here, and I'm getting teamed up and paired up against him. I'll shoot him. <laughs> yeah. The one the one piece that I like about this and how we're evolving is uh I watch a lot of youth that are now starting to do this, and I think that's so cool. Like it, it's not just grown men going out into this. We watch families do the one shot shoot each week. And I think that's such a cool experience because I mean ultimately we want to promote bow hunting, archery, all that stuff. So now we're watching whole teams of people, whole families of people come out and do these shoots. I think it's super awesome. Yep, Some of the kids shoot better bracket. than us. Yeah, absolutely. There's a youth bracket. There's a traditional bracket. There's a men's, there's a women's. It's, it's just fantastic. And you have to, you have to shoot it with your hunting bow though. Yeah. Hunting setups. Oh, I can't use magnifiers or. Oh, you can use a good sight because they're asking us to shoot a hundred yards, but you need to use your hunting bow, hunting arrows and field tips. That's the official rule. Hmm. Gotcha. I like that. That that can get kind of fun. I like watching it. I I need to get in on it. I guess. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm tired of yeah, not shooting it. And it's all based off the honor system and stuff. I mean, we've we've had some. We actually had a lot of issues last year because you know I I tell every I, I try to keep the rules down because I've noticed with with like anytime you have regulations, uh, the the honest guy a lot of times is one that gets screwed over. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like he's not, he's not, uh, he's not trying to break any rules, but he accidentally does something, gets disqualified. So I really don't like disqualification. But I've also found out though that as you go in these things, and you and more people get trained up and they know what to do, you actually regulations and rules are actually a really good thing uh, because they're trained up and they can help help you teach people. And I don't have to go through and individually tell everybody, hey, this is what you got to do. And uh, you kind of remove any of that, any of that, well, he just didn't know, or this is how we do it or whatever. You know, there it is, black and white, and it actually helps uh, have a, a, lot, a contest a lot more fun, a lot more even playing field. That's awesome. So not only the one shot, but you guys do a lot of other hunting t- style stuff in the bow league also why don't you go into a little bit of that da talk about the elk league so we kicked that off this will be our third season i mean so i I like relevance and i like stuff all year round i don't Mm -hmm. like gaps so as soon as this one shot league is done we're going to start our uh push for you know getting people to sign up for the deer well deer hunting you know you would see the bulk of that kicking off we'll say october november december that's when a lot of the bucks are falling well, we filled the September time frame with this elk contest. I try to get as many people as I can to sign up. We've got some call companies donating some calls. Um, very simple system. You know, I'll build the teams totally random because we don't have as many elk hunters yet. So last year we had probably teams of seven to 10. Everyone just enters their bull or cow winner takes home some cool prizes and then big bowl last year i think took home like some sitka and stuff like that just super fun and easy and then what what's how does how does the scoring go with that so we run that one different instead of doing like pope and young or boone and crockett scoring as far as the inches i like to keep it simple for this because if you underscore or overscore a bowl 
we're not talking five or 10 inches. We could be talking 30 or 40. So um, last year I shot a bull. He had 13 points. So that bull yields 13 points. Uh, if it's a four by four, it's eight points. And then to keep it easy, if you shoot a cow or a spike, it's worth three points. Gotcha. Cool. And then there's there. How many people are in a team? You so said- it depends on how many we can get to sign up. Uh, last year, the team was about seven to ten per team. If we get a bunch more, I'll probably draw it down a little. My goal is to keep growing that every single year because there's a ton of Western hunters that I think need to start playing in this. It's a lot of fun. There are deer contests out there, but I've never found an elk contest. So this could be a little niche area for us to really start something and grow. That's awesome. I think it's kind of cool. And then you guys have the, the deer hunting contest. <clears throat> What's that all about? So we started it in 2015 and, uh, last, you know, first year, I think we had nine teams last year. We had 576 teams, uh, over 1700 competitors. Uh, we entered almost 50,000 inches. That's kind of a sore subject for me because <laughs> I really wanted in DA2. Uh, we both wanted to hit 50,000. And uh, it's just part of we, it, you know, every year, you know, you can look at like, hey, this is the, these are all the good things that happen. But there's a, a reason behind, hey, why didn't 15, 20% of the guys enter their deer? And we've really focused on breaking that down and, and just not being so focused on the big deer states. So <clears throat> new for this year, uh, we're still going to have see same three man team set up and, you know, you can sign up with guys from any state, you know, they can be people you've known forever or people you knew for a week, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but new for this year, we're going to have, weekly big buck prizes we have a monthly prize package as a random draw for any buck that was entered that month we have uh prizes for each of the top 10 teams okay so that's that's several thousand dollars in prizes there and what's really cool this year is we have a prize package for the top buck from every single state in the United States. So, and that, without adding anything else to that, uh, it's already about a $100 prize package in itself, okay? The, uh, The states also have outfitter sponsors, which we've got, uh, four outfitters that have stepped up for with hunts or shark fishing trips, which is the coolest one I think, uh, so far. Oh, they're all cool, but I just, I've never heard of anybody bow fishing a shark. Uh, it's, it's actually a thing, uh, which y'all are up in, up north. Up yeah. North that, north that's Canada, Trev's so. neck of the woods. Yeah. You know, Trev is a fisherman by, by trade. Like really? he's out there oh, catching, wow. he caught what was it? 800 pound tuna, uh, 86 inches. Oh, dang. Wow. So it's up I, there, 600, 700. I've caught sailfish so, bigger than that. I'm un, unimpressed. Sorry. This, so this is in y'all's wheelhouse. But anyway, so we also have uh, taxidermy sponsors, which they sponsor a shoulder mount for the largest buck for each state. We've got uh, 12 states that are sponsored right now for that, which I think is incredible. So um, hold on, Ben. Hold on, Ben. So this is already you off in outer space. Let me just yeah. reel you down real quick. Uh, so the contest itself is a free online bow hunting contest. Yeah, uh, it's free. <laughs> it, it's, it, we can't stress enough that this is a free, you know, you're hearing all these cool prizes and you might be thinking like, oh, what's the cost? No catch, no cost. You sign up for free. Like Ben already said, you sign up with three buddies or three or two random people. Um, so last year, personally, I met two random people on the league. Uh, we signed up together and we ended up taking top 10. So um that was kind of cool but what is this contest so you're going to take your top scoring buck from each member scored off pope and young boone and crockett scoring uh system and you're going to take that score add it to your teammate score and you get a combination score team with the highest score wins so if we shoot 100 uh, inch bucks we've got 300 inches we rank wherever we rank so 
I just wanted to bring that back so people knew what we were talking about then. Now go yeah, back off to Nerdland. Th <laughs> thanks, man. And what's, what's cool about – and DA kind of triggered my mind a little bit. You can compete as an individual or, you know, as like a team trying to get up in the ranks. But you have to sign up on a team. You can't sign up as an individual, but there are individual prizes. And, and the biggest individual prize is the King of the Tides, okay? And I don't know if you guys know a lot of guys that go out and shoot five bucks a year with their bow, but we have them. And we have guys that are – we have several guys that are out that will kill three or four. Um, guys that and, are averaging 150 inches. You know, they're yeah. not they're not killing – smaller deer not that there's anything wrong with the smaller deer but these are these are real true killers yeah and there's i mean just like i mean just for instance i i finished like i think i was like 12th or 11th in in the king of the times last year and i had three bucks with a 138 average so i mean i wasn't even in the conversation and i had a i felt like i had a really good year um there were several guys that, you know, they're traveling different states. And what, what's cool about it, what it all brings home is you're, at, you're able to network in within the contest, within the group, to hunt other states and make a run at this King of the Tines thing. And it doesn't, it doesn't cost you a lot of money, okay? And just like our, because that's kind of our foundation, you know, we're free. So we kind of set the bar really low when it comes to cost, you know. And it also provides a, a networking environment. It's extreme networking where, where, you know, you see these things like in the hunt community in general. Like if you were to post in any hunting group right now, I challenge you to do this. Find any hunting group, I don't care what it is, and say, um, I'm looking to come hunt in whatever state that is, you know, Southern Illinois. Got any tips? I guarantee you there's going to be several people in there say, get out there and walk the ground. Get out there and do some scouting on your own. You know, uh, don't be coming to Facebook to try to steal people's spots or just stupid stuff. You will not have that reaction in the bow hunting. And the reason why is because people want to freaking be there and they, they behave like adults. And if they don't, we get rid of them. And this is, this has kind of been the thing that, that I needed as far as like, um, general hunting conversation. Like I want to be able to talk to people and not get beat up for other things. And that's, and that's, but that's everything in a nutshell, as far as what I have, as far as the bow hunting league, that's everything. Um, that's the deer contest. That's that's all the other contests. But I tell you what, I'm talking to the – we have a showdown thread. A showdown messenger was everybody that competed in the showdown uh, last year. Let's tell them what the showdown is. So the showdown is – DA, have DA do this one. Go for yeah, it, DA. DA oh, geez. Showdown. You know all about it. I can do it. Do it. Take it. All right. Well, DA put together the showdown last year. And what it is is the top ten uh, – top ten individuals – that uh, their, their king of time score, so the collective gross score of all of their deer put together, put them in the top 10 as an individual in the bow hunting league. There were also a couple other people that were added because they were on the, the winning team and, and, and things like that. But as a whole, it's basically the top 10 people in the king of times. So the people who are there killed big deer. Uh, and they all go to a retreat somewhere that's planned. This year it was planned by... Uh, by DA and they, they all go. And the idea is at the end of that hunt, uh, somebody's gonna, hopefully somebody's going to kill a big deer or, or any deer, right. As a, this year was a pretty tough yeah, year, anything. but <laughs> yeah, this year was a tough year, but really what happens is, uh, guys go down there and they just have a great time together. They meet great people. Uh, you don't, you don't generally get in a room with nine other people who, are as absolutely fanatical about what you do as those people will be, because these are people who, yeah, I, I, my average last year was 151 and I wasn't even invited. Right. I didn't even come close. I, 
you you just can't do it. So it's We're a talking killers of kill- killers. Yeah, I I didn't I couldn't I can't hold Matt uh, Matt Coleman's. Not gosh, gosh darn! I can't say his name. Help me. Powell. Matt I can't Powell. hold Matt Powell's jockstrap, right? <laughs> <laughs> that man's killer. Yeah. So the thing that I like about the showdown too is, um, you know, you talked about you're talking with a bunch of killers. These guys are all working class, just awesome dudes, salt of the earth. They don't have time to play on Instagram and take pictures of themselves checking, you know, game cameras or posing in yoga pants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're out there work. They're out there working all year, and, and they take their time off and they go crush big bucks. So, like to get in this room of, this isn't to insult them, but you know, no name according to the interest uh, industry people, and just like, I'm in shock. I'm sitting around guys who kill 160, 170 inch bucks every year or multiple. You know, it's just so smart. So many years of experience and knowledge there. Like the amount of stuff that I learned in those couple of days was just unbelievable and then to ben's point earlier you start networking um you're able to vet people out you know before you just invite someone to your honey hole because we've all been burned by that like you're able to have these conversations you're able to learn who the person truly is and then you know you extend that hey you want to come hunt my public land spot in state x yeah i do do you want to come back and hunt my farm in state y And, and like the relationship is formed the bond is formed and just so much fun. It was such a wonderful time um, to go with what Clay was saying. We, we hunted down in Florida. Um, I think we did more fishing, drinking, and eating <laughs> than we did actual killing. Did some but bike it was awesome. riding. Did some cross-country oh, yeah. bike riding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, I'll, I'll but, tell everybody for they, they, what they don't know because I'm watching from the sidelines while this is going on. <laughs> They're posting live videos in their Airbnb. They found children's bikes. So there are... 240 pound men riding on toddler bikes try, with their bows and their packs and their mountain biking down the road. Uh, it's, it was just a lot of fun to watch. That, that was uh, me, and, <clears throat> me and Matt were driving around. Look, this place we we're hunting was gigantic and we found this place that had a gate on it. Well, it was really hard to get to that spot from, from the other entrance. I mean, it's several mile drive. So we're like, well, we need to come in from this side. Well, we <clears throat> we decided we walked in the first afternoon. We really liked it. And well, we get back to the Airbnb and I'm like, look at all these bikes, man. And so me, Powell, and we and Matt Brunswick went with us and he, he killed a two hundred and fifty two inch deer in Ohio last year. It was the biggest buck we've ever had entered. That's why he was down there. He was one of the top three bucks that, that got yeah. killed. It's crazy. But anyway, it's cool. All us three riding this these bikes down this road and powell he's a really good dude because he could have just said hey you know me you know just told me you know just said hey me and you were gonna go but he but we wanted brunswick to go with us and so there was two 10 speeds and then there was a pink <laughs> flower bike that powell rode because yeah because he had, because he had a he has the shortest legs. <laughs> That's why. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's yeah. not a small man. The, but that, I've got a video of that, guys, and and I will share that with you, and you can put it on your your channel. But I tried to get him on here, but he's if it's dry this time of year, he's cutting timber, and he he don't get home until dark. So, um, but I but I'll send it to you so you can. Sounds like I'm gonna have to screen clip that as the uh, cover art. Yeah, it's just one more example of the camaraderie that happens on this league and uh i have i have met tons of great people that i'm going to hunt with someday and and uh da was talking about vetting people that's a hard thing to do on the internet but when you start seeing their interactions and how they react and and what they do, you get a pretty good feel. You know, I, I invited a, a new friend into my home after having never met him, but I talked to him so much. Uh, he was just up here two weeks ago, turkey hunting. So uh, it, it's Justin Miller and I, so we, we had a great time. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I, my team this year has got some uh, different person on it and it's, it's just fantastic. I, I can't, I just can't say enough about the value in the networking 
And if I were, I mean, if I had a company, the exposure that you get instantly is really, it's lasting throughout the year. I think it's pretty impressive. I definitely, I want to wind it back real quick. Ben, can you just tell us a little bit why you started this and what was like the whole outlook on it? Like, what did you, what did you think that it was going to become so on and so forth? So I didn't eat. So I got in the, all of the, you know, when forums were big, right. Right at the end of the heyday of forums. Right. Mm -hmm. I would get in all the, the, the deer hunting contests, all the bow hunting contests. Well, I really enjoyed the relationships I built and that's how I met DA. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of that common thread there, but that's, I really enjoyed talking to people in those groups and stuff. But one thing I could not stand was that I could not build my own team. And because you know how the randomized thing goes, it's like, Oh, it's, you know, free for everybody. And, you know, we, you know, Everybody gets the opportunity and stuff. Well, I'm serious about deer hunting. And I, even if a guy doesn't kill, that's fine as long as he grinds it out. I'm, that's, but I want somebody that's, that's grinding it out with me. And, uh, and that's just something that we got aggravated by. I mean, I was just sitting here like, I mean, me and Powell, um, we were just, you know, me and, and a couple of my other buddies, we talked about it and we were all in these contests, but we kept getting randomized and put on these teams and then guys quit bow hunting once gun season come in. And I just, and I was like, man, if we could build our own team, we'd win. Cause we all killed nice deer. I mean, we're like Pope and young, you know, one thirties average every year, you know, between us and for Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky, Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee, hey, Tennessee, Tennessee was where we killed almost all of our deer. Early I'm from on. Nebraska. I can't talk at all. <laughs> but uh, I just I I just listened to to the back end of uh, the other podcast you did with Damien. I listened to it again, and uh, he was giving you a hard time about the general being from Nebraska, and you can't kill one anything close to it. Right. <laughs> but, but but anyway, so we're so we're you know we're just sitting around. I was like, man, we could do this, and I was like, it'd be fun. You know, you could if you could get guys. So actually, the first couple of years, I actually had to build the teams all on my own. Um, I was getting guys linked up because everything's so segmented. You'd have two guys that that you know would have this little hunting outfit. You know, that was right before that everybody started getting super segmented as far as like you know uh, Western Kentucky outdoors, Nebraska bow hunters stuff like that you know and so i was like having to build teams just for my contest just where we get it launched you know and but anyway that's what started it it was just um it's almost kind of started in frustration you know just because i want i knew how much fun it was to uh to hunt and to drive each other and you'll see this like what i like about it is you get this banner going between different teams and um, these guys don't know each other before this contest starts and they get in and they'll be uh, a lot of times they'll be, they'll both have two bucks and they'll have like an average of like 165 and they're only one deer away from winning the whole thing, you know, both of them. And they talk so much smack back and forth, but what ends up happening is you see these guys, they'll end up hunting together uh, either that year or in, in, you know, they'll go turkey hunting together or they just, you know, they're friends, you know, they've got a friendship now based off because they've, uh, they've got credibility because they are out there doing what they do already. So it's, it's, that's what's, but that's why, I, why I got started. It was just a, basically, cause I felt like I had a need for it. You know, I wanted to show what, me and my buddies could kill you know <laughs> I, like I think it. to go to go with what ben's saying to um you start a contest you know you play in some of these other ones and i got to be very tactful with this because i want people to understand that we don't dislike any other form of hunting but in here it is strictly the bow hunting league we will not approve rifle kills we will not approve crossbow kills and again we have no hate towards that stuff whatsoever but this is a bow hunting community for the hardcore bow hunter 
who from the beginning of the season to the end of the season is out there chasing after animals with their bows. And that's one thing that I love about this too, is because we try very hard to maintain like our credibility and our integrity for that specifically. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. It's a hardcore um, it's, standard. DA, he refused to to approve my post when my five-year-old daughter killed her first bird this year. And I, <laughs> I, I, I get it because <laughs> yeah. she killed it with a gun. And again, it, it's, it's no hate to anything else, but we have to maintain credibility as we grow this because, you know, who knows what this is going to be in three to five years. This could be a hundred thousand dollars in free um, prizes. So we want to make sure that we, we continue to grow appropriately. I, I think the, the, I like about it is that any state can get in on it. So like some of like your big contests, so on and so forth, like for us from the East coast, I mean, like I was going to get in on what was that? What was the big one? The big white tail challenge. Um, I don't know, but they don't have, they don't even have like part of the Northeast, none of the Northeast, none of New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Maine, Vermont. I mean, dude, there's some big deer up there. Um, there's yeah. some absolute giant deer up there. I mean, yeah. Wow. <laughs> there's some big deer up there and we just, we couldn't get into it. But I, one thing I do like about the, the, um, the, the bow hunting league is that no matter what state you're from, you can get in on it. Yeah. And to go along with that too, you know, someone might be sitting here listening to this right now. Like, well, I live in Vermont and I can only kill a hundred inch deer this year. Like, why would I want to sign up for this? Again, look beyond the contest itself. It's a wonderful networking opportunity, camaraderie. You know, these are buzzwords too, but like, I, I truly feel like we're a genuine group where this stuff is like real raw emotions and, and, and it's a great time. Oh, by the way, we've structured it to the point where, okay, you're from Vermont. Well, you can still win top buck of Vermont. You can still win a weekly big buck or a monthly, you know, we're, we're trying to make it so everyone feels excited to sign up, you know, because I, I, I'll be honest, I was intimidated. Like, why am I going to sign up with two other people? I kill dinks every year. I'm not going to be able to compete with, you know, these other people. Well, I had an exceptional year last year and we finished top 10 with someone from Kentucky Missouri. And then here I am in Florida. So anyone has a shot. People have bad years and people have really good years. And not only the, the, the deer hunting contest, you guys also run a turkey hunting contest, which is still going on now today, mm -hmm. which is kind of a really cool thing. So even if you don't shoot big bucks, but you shoot turkeys, you can get in on a team. I mean, what's it? You have what? 10 people in a team? 20. Oh, there's 20 in a team. Yeah. Okay. Where have <laughs> and I been? And the, the Turkey League, it's it's in its third year, and we've made tweaks to it as we've gone. And now we have enough diehard guys. We're actually moving it to a uh, build-your-own-team uh, setup like the Whitetail League, but it'll be 20 guys per team. So it's going to – but we have enough now where we could have – right now, just with the people we have, we could have four – outstanding teams based off of those guys and then what it's going to do it's going to bring more killers to the group um you you know a lot of people sit back and don't get i've had people quit we have a lot of people quit the turkey league each year you know we'll grow we grow 10 percent, 15 percent on the turkey league but the thing is we have we'll lose 40 percent because they have a bad experience because of just different things you know like somebody signs up and they're not serious and so we knew this year it was time to make the shift and and let these captains that are putting in all this work um where they can recruit their own team and go at it and still it's there's not a whole lot of we do have a big prize package for the king of the spurs it's the one that accumulates the most uh spur inches for the season um but for the team prize itself, it's it's third regiment calls, and uh, I get everybody a medallion made. So it's not like you're you have a huge incentive monetarily to to win it. It it just still builds on that camaraderie and having a little bit of pride and like going out and grinding it with your bow. Um, you know, like Clay. I don't think Clay did a lot of bow hunting turkeys before this contest before he started competing in it. Yeah, I wasn't uh, I wasn't motivated to do it. I, I enjoy calling birds in and, and shooting them with a shotgun. And uh, I, I, this is a two-part response for me. Number one, 
I so much more appreciate turkeys this year because I could have killed 30 birds. I, but I've only killed two with a bow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it is a whole new ball game and I'm really enjoying it more. Whereas before I could really give or take turkey hunting. I mean, I loved it, but when they grew antlers, that's when I'd start getting excited. <laughs> uh, so, but, but since they haven't, uh, the bow hunting portion and then the team portion of it to where you didn't want to let your team down, you wanted to put out a good showing, uh, such a, a great way to, to do that. And then also, uh, give me a little bit more passion for bow hunting, which I don't know how that's possible, but it's cha- It's added a species into something that I, that I care about with my bow. Now that doesn't mean I won't go out and never shotgun hunt them again, but I've, I've got work to do. I kind of like the fact of, you know, cause I got in on the, on the Turkey league this year and like they, you get, I got into like the group of all the 20 guys and we're on there chit chat and then kind of following along what everyone's kind of doing. And you're kind of like close niche on watching people go through their season and the struggles and the, you know, the highs and the lows of their season. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know, that's 20 different people that probably would have never watched their season go by, you know? So it was kind of cool to kind of chit chat with them or if somebody's having a struggle or whatever, you can just pop it on there. We were sharing, sharing trail cam pictures, all kinds of stuff. So it was cool to kind of keep it, kind of tight with 20 other guys that you probably would have never even watched their season, which that's, was, was cool for me. Man. That's right. And five or more of those guys, Trevor Berwick is going to be friends with mm-hmm. forever now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, I, I've straight up went on there and added them all as friends. Yep. And you're going to be, you're going to not just be random Facebook friends, but someday you're going to be traveling through Ohio or Tennessee mm-hmm. and you're going to say, Hey, John, where are you at? Oh, I'm, I'm over here. Hey, I want to kill a bird. Let's go. It's just a great time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's one of those things. I mean, like, so going back to kind of what Ben was saying, like with the whole forum things like forum was, that was a cream of the crop, right? Like I started as a forum. That's how I started my life. Like at 15 years old, we had a, um, a forum called ctbowhunting.com. And I was like, that's where I started my, my whole entire outdoor career. And like, it was so cool, the camaraderie of everybody together. And then Facebook kind of kicked off. And then everyone, you kind of get like the spammers and all the like the negative people. So it was cool to find the group like the Bow Hunting League, where those guys are real hardcore guys that were originally on forums, but forums are obviously the way of the past. So it's definitely and, and it's on a national level, not just, you know, they they would I know like around here, they had just like small, like little niche town or state by state, you know. So it's kind of cool of kind of what you guys are doing so it's actually real people and people actually you know keep those people under tabs because that's one of my biggest pet peeves is facebook with other hunters the hunting bashing yeah and i don't know how much of that is uh truly authentic uh you know the thing is there's nothing to create a profile and throw a bunch of pictures on it and and you know i you know there's it's so easy to get people riled up I mean, and, and it, you can just sit and watch and observe and you already know 10 of the different things to say and how to argue. And I, I don't know how much of it's actually sportsmen creating the drama and being the trolls. I mean, it's so easy for uh, others. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I, it's so it is. It's Yeah, so you, can, bad. you can do that pretty easy on Facebook. For yeah, sure. it's so bad that I just, I feel like, a, a good portion of it's just trying to rip us down and it's and it's easy to do i mean because we're all you know the thing is when you you know you can go talk about somebody's house you can talk about a man's house and he ain't gonna get he ain't gonna care like you can say man your house is dirty your house is small or you're you know you're you need to cut your grass or whatever and he ain't gonna care but you start talking about his deer hunting, he's gonna get mad <laughs> and, yeah you don't put up with that do you <laughs> no i was i, I was you know, waiting I was waiting for my segue. So like, yeah, Ben, you're absolutely right. People do this bashing, but it is not allowed on this site because um, we hold that standard. Like, I don't want to see that stuff. Um, There are children who come on our site. So I'll even filter out, you know, if someone's being a little extra with the swearing, I'm going to remove the post. Um, I I keep Ben on his toes. I've banned sponsors before because they weren't maintaining a standard. So what I can promise you is if you come to our page, you can, I don't want to say let your guard down, but you're going to be in a comfortable area. People are going to celebrate with you. They're going to build you up. They're going to promote what you're doing. Uh, this is not a, 
Why did you shoot that? Did you that create a safe space, DJ? Was just safe space. Say that. <laughs> did you create a safe space for bow hunters? I did. I oh, did. Wait, boy. does it come with a stress card? We do. Yep. Just hold it yes. up and I'll take care of it. Yes. I am in. It's all around fun. I can tell there's you so that. many military there's, guys. There's a lot of stuff. there's a lot of, of <laughs> trash talking too, by the way. It's not like everybody has to, you know, button their top button and and all be perfect all the time. There's a lot of trash talk and there's a lot of fun. That's one it's of my favorite parts. It's I don't know professional. about professional. Damien Riffle tears me down about every single time I shoot the one shot. So <laughs> listen, Ken Ken fun, can keep you know? it to himself. No. <laughs> yeah, Ken, yeah. I am not Barbie, but he is Ken. <laughs> ah, memories. Is there uh, anything else you guys kind of want to touch on? I know you guys have a little bit, you know. Is there anything? Well, well, uh, I'll give you kind of a few things, and DA can clean it up. Um, so, <clears throat> we start the Whitetail League signups um, on the 1st of June. So, it'll run from June 1st until fe- – uh, um, sorry, fe- it run from June 1st to August 15th. Uh, sometimes we run until August- – we'll probably run until August 31st because we do get a lot of di- late signups. But the key is you have to be signed up before you can enter a deer. So if you're if you're hunting in Tennessee for the early velvet or you're out west somewhere, I know California's got some hunting going on and stuff then, um, you have to be signed up to enter your deer. Uh, we just crossed over $33,000 in prizes uh, yesterday. I, ca- I added everything up, and it grows a little bit each week. And that's not, you know, nothing, that's not too shabby for a free contest. Um, and I guess the last thing about that, because I've really focused a lot on our prizes this year, because, and when I say that, I'm not focusing necessarily on the prize itself, but more importantly, the small business that we partner with. Uh, we have, I think we have 65 small businesses that we're working with, and I think this day and time has never been more important for us to support our friends and and support like-minded bow hunters and guys that own their own businesses. And uh, these are taxidermists, pro shops, uh, outfitters, um, you know, guys that have products. What's that? Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. I mean, just like um, just the like t-shirt. deer crossing archery. You know, that's they're in they're in you know they're they're in Ohio. Um, there's small business that just trying to make good stuff for guys and, uh, out on a limb. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but, but that's really all I have to say about all that. I mean, we've kind of changed our, you know, we maintained our, our platform and it's the same free type vehicle to compete in, but I can see with the following now we're able to help, um, our sponsors out and help these small businesses out where they can help us too if i can add some stuff um sometimes online contests for deer have a negative rep um everyone's entitled to their own opinion well some opinions are you know why would you have a contest that promotes killing animals or this is going to force people to go shoot things that they they shouldn't you know there's all kinds of stuff out there um i just ask that you give us a shot you don't even have to sign up. Come over and hang out. There are a lot of people who come onto this page just to see the camaraderie, just to watch big bucks be killed. It's a lot of fun. It's interactive. You know, it's beyond just the contest itself. And then I kind of think that if you come on for a year, you just see what we're doing, you'll realize that we're not about just killing things. Oh, I say that loosely. <laughs> it's it, 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 I am. It, it, it's a it, it's I about <laughs> it's about networking and 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 you know promoting bow hunting, promoting hunting, promoting you know entrepreneurs and all these other things. Like the contest is just a small piece of what this actually is. So you know if, if you've got that um, biased or if you know you have been disgusted with other contests, I, I just ask that you come hang out because we have a lot of fun. It's a bunch of good people. And we, we are different. I will tell you, we are different. You go to some of these other pages and they're improving anything. You're going to be spammed with 
random um, marketing stuff or advertising. Damascus knives. Yep. Yep. All of those things. You're not going to find that here. It's going to be very relevant content to what's going on. I like it. I like it a lot. (laughs) There you guys are almost convincing me. What's that? Send us off. Send us off. We about bringing it to a close here. You want me to send it off with a story or what, Trev? <laughs> life no, I lesson? Don't, I don't want to tell any stories. Uh, no, no real life lessons here. Except, oh. uh, <laughs> I'll do a lot. Next time we're on, I'll do a life lesson with Clay Thurman. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I wish I'd have been thinking because I don't have any prepared. The, the, the main thing is, D, excuse me, DA covered it all. And, and, and Ben covered it as well. So from the outside looking in, and hopefully I can keep volunteering and keep doing more and more for the league. But the thing that I just, uh, what DA said, I just, if you give this place a chance and you're diehard one or all of these things, archery, turkeys, elk, or whitetail, or, or, uh, Western mule deer. It's a deer contest. Even though it says whitetail league. It's a I was going to ask that. Can you, can you, yeah, let me, let me talk about then? that. Cause because I, I, I've got a big complaint for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand on the too. show. So scoring, right. Uh, because mule deer take another 20 inches to get into the record book. They take 20 inches off of your Time's mule deer up, to fair. And that's Time's okay. Up. And that's okay. <laughs> So, so that's how you would enter a mule deer. You kill a, if you kill a 200 inch mule deer, it's a 180 inch deer. You kill an eight, 180 inch mule deer, it's 160 inch deer. For a guy like me that shoots 165 inch deer, that's pretty tough. Because <laughs> I shoot 145, you know, and that doesn't score very well. No, it's fun. You can you can enter blacktail. You can enter coos. They get points added to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole country can participate here. It doesn't just have to be white tail. And it doesn't matter what it scored. It matters the fun that you've had, the people you meet. I didn't know Ben. I didn't know DA. I didn't know any of these people, right? Uh, and and to watch it evolve in just the last 18 months, like I have, has been pretty interesting. Absolutely. Well, boys, I got to ask one last question before we wrap this up. You all know the question, so we can go round table with it. What drives you guys outdoors? My children. Love it. <laughs> the last time my the last time my answer was the bow hunting league. If you remember that, yeah, yes. I do. bow hunting league drives me outdoors because it gives me motivation. So that's still I'm, my answer. Mine's a little different, like mental health and resiliency. Like I work hard, you know. We're 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 dads, we're fathers, we're 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 workers. We need a reset. We need a recharge. My time in the woods is wonderful. It recharges me, so I can come out and be an awesome person for everyone else. So resiliency. Love it. And you, Ben? I mean, mine's very similar to DA's, but mine's, it's, you know, just all this bow hunting stuff's just a huge distraction. Uh, you know, there's plenty of stuff to get you bogged down mentally, you know, like DA said, but there's, you know, there's plenty of stuff we can focus on and just wears us down, puts age on her, on us. And, you know, it, but I like the distraction of having a hobby. You know, when I was, uh, all the way through school and through college and stuff, I played college. I played college baseball. Played baseball all the way through, and that was my distraction from other realities, you know. And I had to fill it with something, and and that's all this is is just a huge distraction from rea- reality. <laughs> Easy enough. Well, everybody out there listening, now's the perfect time to go pick up your bow and start getting ready for the season. Why not have an excuse, a reason to compete, a reason to push yourself a little further than just taking reps at the same target over and over? Jump on like the words out of their mouth. Give them a shot, literally. Give us one shot. One shot. Just one shot. That's all we need. Just what DA said. There you go. You would would be surprised at how much that live button will resemble real true pressure in the woods. Yep. So... Pick up your bows, get online, get signed up, participate, have some fun with it, and uh, give these guys a hard time while you're in there because it sounds like that's what they're all about. Yep, search Bow Hunting League on Facebook. That's all you need to do. All right. Anywhere else that they can find information or is it Facebook only? Go to bowhuntingleague.com. 
uh, we have links to all of our other platforms there and uh, you can, that's where I actually all the sign up is for the uh, whitetail competition. Outstanding. So bowhuntinglead.com, jump on, get signed up, get the information. And uh, until then, thanks for taking the ride right here on the outdoor drive. 